and he is asking Sanjay. Sanjay was given the blessing by Srila Vyasa Dev that he could see everything going on at Kurukshetra. So Dhritarashtra as Sanjay, he said to him, Mamaka Pandavaschaiva. He said, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do? That shows his, the mood of Dhritarashtra, that he separated his sons and the sons of Pandu. Now Pandu was his own brother, Pandu and Dhritarashtra. They were two brothers. Vidura was also their brother, but different mothers. So Pandu and Dhritarashtra were brothers. And when Pandu died, then the sons of Pandu, the five Pandavas, they came under the care of Dhritarashtra. Dhritarashtra was their uncle, but in the absence of Pandu, he should have become like a father. He should have been caring. But instead, Dhritarashtra could only think of his sons. Mamaka Pandavas Chaiva. My sons and the sons of Pandu. So he made a distinction between the two sides. And this is, this is the, the problem. This is the cause of the the conflict, the war, which is going to take place there at Kurukshetra. So Arjuna had to go into the battlefield and he asked Lord Krishna to also, you know, actually both Duryodhana and Arjuna and Yudhisthira, they wanted Lord Krishna on their side. But Krishna said, no, I'm not going to fight. And Lord Balaram also, he also said, I'm not, also, I won't fight. Lord Balaram went away. He went to visit the holy places. But Lord Krishna stayed. Lord Krishna said, I'm not going to fight, but once I can have my army and the other side they can help me as a chariot driver. If I won't fight, but I can be the driver of the chariot. So, there you go. He wanted to have Krishna's army. He thought, if Krishna's not going to fight, then what's the good? I will have his army. So, there you go. got the army of Lord Krishna, and Arjuna was happy because he wanted Krishna. So you can see the difference in the thinking of the devotee, those who are the devotees and those who are not devotees. Dhritarashtra, he is not a devotee. So he makes distinction, my sons and the others, the others, the sons of Pandu, they're his own family but he is making a distinction between them. However, Arjuna, he wants Krishna. He doesn't want Krishna's army. Duryodhana, he wanted Krishna's army. Some, pe some people want the opulences of Krishna. They don't want Krishna. Sometimes we say, they want the kingdom of God, but they don't want God. Right? Is that a very good thing? You want the kingdom of God? You want to enjoy all the opulence of God, but you don't want God. Is that very nice? No, that's not a very good thing, is it? So, this was the mood of Duryodhana and the Kauravats, the sons of Dhritarashtra. They wanted to enjoy Krishna's opulences, but they didn't care so much about Krishna. Arjuna, however, he is a devotee. 
that actually it said later on in the fourth chapter of the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna himself describes why he chose why he chose Arjuna to hear the Bhagavad Gita. And Lord Krishna said, Bhaktoti me sakacheti rahasyam hi etatutamam. Because you are my devotee as well as my friend. Therefore, you can understand this knowledge. So Arjuna was a friend of Lord Krishna. They were the same age. They grew up together. And uh, Arjuna, not only is a friend of Krishna, but he is also a devotee of the Supreme Lord. So Lord Krishna was happy to be with Arjuna. And Krishna has come as the chariot driver of Arjuna. Now just like if you have a car, maybe you have a big car, and maybe you're very busy, you don't like to drive, so you have a driver, you have your own driver. So Krishna was like the driver for Arjuna. So that to be the charioteer in the times of the 5,000 years ago, the charioteer, the person who's driving the chariot, he has to take care of the horses, he has to make sure the chariot is good, good working order. So he is actually considered to be like Sudhara, like a worker. He's a worker. He's not like a king. Arjuna is the Kshatriya. He's of the royal order. He's the king. So Arjuna is in charge and Krishna is the driver of the chariot. So Arjuna is giving orders to Krishna. So this is very special, very unusual situation because Lord Krishna is his Swayam Bhagavan. He's, he's the Supreme Lord. When Krishna speaks in the Bhagavad Gita, it says, Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. But we heard tonight when Arjuna was speaking, it was said, Arjuna Uvacha. Why didn't they just say Krishna Uvacha? But in Bhagavad Gita, Srila Vyasadeva has written Bhagavad Gita and he's written Sri Bhagavan Uvacha. Because Lord Krishna is Bhagavan. He is the Supreme. Bhagavan means one who has all opulences. People, some, there are different opulences which people have. Somebody has wealth. That's a very good thing to have, isn't it? You have wealth. That's an opulence. Another opulence is to have beauty. And we see people want beauty very much. That's a big business. The beauty parlors, right? People, even for the men, they have beauty parlors. You know, the men even want to be beautiful. <laughs> so, beauty parlor, beauty, wealth, then strength. You go to the gym. The men like to go to the gym. Women also sometimes go to the gym also, right? Build the muscles, build the body, right? And so, strength wealth, beauty, then fame. Oh, people like to be famous. Oh, you become famous. Everybody knows you. Oh, that's a, another opulence. And then knowledge. That's another op opulence. We know people spend a lot of time and money to get education, to get knowledge. So those are five opulences, and there's one... Uh -huh. and, and there's one more opulence.
So that other final opulence is renunciation. So Lord Krishna has all those things in full. Wealth, beauty, knowledge, fame, strength, and renunciation. Nobody has these things equal to Krishna. You have some wealth, you have some beauty, you have something, but not equal or greater than Krishna. That's why Krishna is Bhagavan. So because Krishna is Bhagavan, he is, he is described by even Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma is the first living entity in the universe. You know Chaturmukh Brahma, the four-faced Brahma? Brahma, he's born from the lotus flower. The lotus flower which comes from the navel of Lord Vishnu. So this Brahma, he prays to, he describes Lord Krishna. He says, Ishwara Parama Krishna. See, Krishna is the supreme Ishwara. There are many Ishwaras, but there's only one Param Ishwara. That is Lord Krishna. Vishnu is also Krishna. Vishnu is another form of Krishna. Vishnu comes from Krishna. But Krishna is the original form of the God. So he is the Param Ishwara. But in the Bhagavad Gita, he's coming on the Kurukshetra and he's driving the chariot. And Arjuna is telling him, bring my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. I want to see who is here. Arjuna had come to fight. You're going to fight, you want to see who you're fighting against, right? So, Arjuna is giving the order to Krishna. So this is very unusual. Because Krishna is the Supreme. Who can order him? Who can tell him what to do? He is the Supreme. We all come and we pray to God. We pray to Him. But Arjuna, he tells Krishna, bring my chariot in the middle. I want to see who are here, who's come to fight. So this is a very special situation in the Kurukshetra war. Right before the battle began, Lord Krishna is taking orders from Arjuna. And Lord Krishna is going, Yes, yes Prabhu, I will bring the chariot into the middle. Lord Krishna doesn't mind to take the instruction from Arjuna. He's happy because Arjuna is his devotee. So this is the power of devotion. Devotion is a very special thing. But you have to understand there are qualities of devotion. We have some devotion, but our devotion may it's mixed with other things. Like we have some devotion for Krishna, but you have devotion also for your family. Right? You have a you have children, you have devotion for your children. Just like Krishna has wives. How many wives did Krishna have? Who knows? How many wives? 16,000. 16,108. Right. Krishna. And how many children did these wives have? Each one ten. Each one had ten sons and one daughter. Look at them, get them all married, didn't 
<laughs> yes, science is only one person. So anyway, Krishna's wives, they have devotion for Krishna, but they also have children. So naturally they will have devotion for their children also. So their devotion for Krishna is mixed because some devotion is there for their own children. Arjuna, he has special devotion for Krishna. Arjuna also has wives and children, but he has very, very concentrated love and devotion for Krishna. All the Pandavas, they're very devotee to Lord Krishna. Devotion means they, they would do anything for Him. They'll do anything for Krishna. And they're always anxious and eager to be with Krishna. So Arjuna, he, when he gives the order to Krishna, He's telling Krishna, bring my chariot into the middle of the battlefield. It's not wrong. It's not an offense. You may think, oh, he is God, he is Bhagavan, and you're telling him what to do? Who are you to tell him what to do? But Krishna's happy because Arjuna is his devotee. And Arjuna has love for Krishna. So when Arjuna tells Krishna to bring the chariot, Krishna, yes, he's ready to do it. Because Krishna likes to serve the devotee. Just like the devotees like to serve Krishna, Krishna likes to serve the devotees. He likes to give. We like to give Krishna, Krishna likes to give the devotees. The devotees give service to Krishna. Krishna likes to serve the devotees. There's a this reciprocation based on love. It's not all take. But if somebody, if somebody gives you and takes care of you, naturally you'll feel indebted to them and obliged to them and you'll want to repay them. So Lord Krishna knows how much Arjuna is attached to him. Now we see, we see a similar situation where Krishna becomes controlled by his devotee. And that's a well-known situation. That is the situation where Mother Yashoda controls Krishna. Right? Krishna is the Param Ishwara. He is the Supreme Controller. But Mother Yashoda, she can tie up Krishna. Right? When Krishna breaks the butter, breaks the pots and distributes all the yogurt to the monkeys, makes such a mess, Mother Yashoda saw all the pots were broken. And then she went looking for her son. And she saw him. And Krishna knew he'd been very naughty. He'd done a lot of mischief. So he ran. He was running away from his mother. And his mother was chasing him. Come back! Come back! <laughs> because Mother Yashoda was carrying a big stick. The big stick was meant to churn the butter. So Krishna was afraid. Mother Yashoda is going to beat me. You know, of course, Mother Yashoda, how can she beat Krishna? She cannot. But it's Krishna is enjoying this drama with his devotee. Mother Yashoda is chasing Krishna, and then Ma Krishna lets Mother Yashoda capture him. And when she catches Krishna, then she ties him up. And that's how you get the, the Damodar Lila. Dhamma means the belly. Dhamma means the rope and Udara means the belly. 
the Mudara, one whose belly is bound by ropes. So Lord Krishna got tied up by Mother Yashoda. But that is the loving exchange between Krishna and Mother Yashoda. Lord Krishna is enjoying having the mother and having the mother show affection to him. Mother Yashoda tied up Krishna not to harm him but to protect him because she was worried that Krishna may go away and he may go and give trouble to other ladies. So he thought, I want to keep him safe. I should keep him here. Of course, Krishna then knocked over the Arjuna, the two trees, and delivered the sons of Kubera. So that was the Damodar Lila. So Krishna enacted all that. He became, the, he became controlled by Mother Yashoda. But Krishna controls everyone. He controls every living entity. He is the Param Ishwara. And he is in everyone's heart, controlling us according to our desires. So Lord Krishna at Kurukshetra, he was also controlled by Arjuna, taking the instructions from Arjuna. This is the love of the devotee. And this is the love which Krishna has for his devotees. Arjuna is affectionate to Lord Krishna. He wants to be with Lord Krishna. So when he asked Lord Krishna to bring the chariot into the middle of the battlefield, it wasn't asking him in a nasty manner, but it was in a kind, loving way that he wanted to see who are all these people here who want to fight? So of course Lord Krishna brought the chariot into the middle of the battlefield and then Arjuna immediately he saw who did he see from his chariot? But he sees Bhishma and Drona. He sees the two people who he has the great, the great affection for. Arjuna sees Bhishma and Drona, Grandfather Bhishma and Drona, Arjuna's teacher. So Arjuna had affection for both of these people and that led to some hesitancy on the part of Arjuna. He thought, oh, I cannot fight, I cannot fight these people. But Lord Krishna is there to guide him. And we will see, as you go on reading the Bhagavad Gita, you see how Arjuna surrenders to Krishna. Although Krishna is the chariot driver, Arjuna is intelligent to understand that he should take advantage of Lord Krishna. And he, he tells Lord Krishna, he asks Lord Krishna, he said, now I am, I am confused about my duty. I don't know what should be done and what should not be done. Arjuna describes the cause of his confusion. He said, Karpanya dosh o pahata svabhava. He said, because of my dosha, I have some dosha. You have any dosha? You have not, not, not dosha, not any <laughs> dosha. But dosha, fault, have some faults. In, you know, when you do the astrological chart, right? The astrologer will say, oh, you have some dosha here, right? this dosha here. So like that, they'll give you some indication what's in your astrological chart. So Arjuna said, Kapanya dosho pahata dosho. Arjuna said, my fault. What was Arjuna's fault? Kapanya. Ka, ka. He was a miser. Miserly weakness. Arjuna was being miserly. He was not making proper use of the human life. 
human life is special. Human life is meant to understand our purpose in life. And that's why we have to have religion. It's very important to have religion in society. Because without religion, then we are just animals. And the animals, they are only busy to eat and to sleep and to mate and to defend. Ahara Nidra Bhaya Dosha, the activity of the animal are like that. Eating, sleeping, mating and defending. So human beings who have no religion, they don't have any study or faith in God, then they are just like the animal. So Arjuna was describing, he said, my fault, he said, my miserly weakness is, I don't know what the real purpose of my life is. I don't know why I'm here. And Prabhupada explains, Prabhupada explains, there is the miser and the opposite of the miser is the brahmana. There's a kripana, the miser, and the brahmana. Brahmana is the generous person. Kripana, Prabhupada is a miserly person. Just like somebody may have a lot of money, but they never use it. They don't spend it. So that is kripana. What do they do? They, or they like to count it. They like to look at it. They don't spend it. So that is Kripana, we don't use it. But Brahmana, he will use whatever he's got. He will give it. If others come, he will give to others. That is the Brahm Brahmana, it will be generous. Kripana, but he's not generous. But the Brahmana is generous. So human life is very important. That we have the human life, we have to use it. If we don't use it for the proper thing to understand God and our relationship with God, then we're like a kripana. We're like the miserly person because we have the human body but we didn't use it properly. We just used it to only behave like the, the dogs and the cats. Prabhupada used to say, the dog is on four legs and we're on four wheels. But the business is the same. Where is my food? Where is my sleep? Right. So that, that is the business of the dogs. They're driving, everybody's driving on their four wheels, but the same purpose as the dogs. If we don't have religion, if we don't understand God, in our relationship with him. It's very important for us. So, we call this, this uh, dharma, the religious practice, practice sanatan dharma, eternal religion. We, the, this is the eternal relationship between the Supreme Lord and the living entity. We have a relationship. He is the master and we are the servants. He is the Purush. Purush meaning the enjoyer. And we are the Prakriti. We are the enjoyed. We are his energy. He is the supreme. Everything is his. And we are also his. We are his energy, the Prakriti. So we are meant to serve Him. We are meant to do service. So we may say, well, He is God. He has everything. What service can we do for Him? Does He need us to cook for Him? No. Why not? Because He has many Lakshmis, goddesses of fortune. They're all serving Him in the Vaikuntha, in the spiritual world, in the Golok, 
There are many gopis in the lok, all cooking and serving him. Krishna is not greedy to get our offerings, but he wants to get our love. That is the point. Krishna wants our love. We are giving our love to dogs and cats. We are giving our love to so many other things. Oh, we love our motorbike. We love our car. We love so much. We have to develop that love for Krishna. Krishna Prem. So we have to develop that. That is Sanatana to develop that love. And we show that love for Krishna by chanting his holy name. So the chanting of the Maha Mantra is very important. This is how we can please Krishna. Lord Krishna says, Naham tishtane vaikunte yoginam ridaye shuva tatra tishtane narada Lord Krishna is saying, I am not in the Vaikut, in the spiritual world there. And I am not in the hearts of the yogi. But I am wherever my devotees, like Nara, are chanting my holy name. So chanting the holy name is the Dharma for the Kali Yuga. Chanting of the holy name is very important in this Kali Yuga. In the Kali Yuga, this age, this is called the Kali Yuga. There is no other way but to chant the holy name. Now you may say, oh well, why I have to chant Hare Krishna? Okay, you can chant other names, but they're not as powerful as chanting Hare Krishna. Lord Shiva told his own wife, Lord Shiva's wife was going to chant Vishnu Sahasranam. But Lord Shiva told him, he, Lord Shiva told his wife Parvati, Rame Rame Namo Rame Sahasranam Abhistuyam Sri Rama Nama Varanini. Lord Shiva likes his wife. He said, my dear wife with a beautiful face. He said, you're going to chant the 1,000 names of Vishnu, but I can tell you, 1,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Lord Rama. You just have to chant the one name of Lord Rama. It's equal to the 1,000 names of Vishnu. And then, it's also said, you may say, well, why do we all chant Rama? Why don't we just chant Rama? Why are we chanting Krishna? Because, Three names of Ram are equal to one name of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna's name is so powerful that 3,000 names of Vishnu is equal to one name of Krishna. So that's why we're chanting Hare Krishna. We're chanting Hare Krishna. The Hare means the energy of Krishna. And why we say, well, why don't we just chant Hare Krishna? Why are we chanting Hare Rama? <coughs> well, you have to understand, Rama can be, it can mean Lord Krishna's brother, Balarama. It can also be Lord Krishna's incarnation, Rama Chandra. And it can also be another name of Lord Krishna. Because Lord Krishna is the reservoir of all pleasure, one who gives pleasure to everyone, Rama. So Lord Krishna is also Rama. So Jiva Goswami tells us like that, that chanting the Maha Mantra is the best means of deliverance in the Kali Yuga. You just have to chant the holy name. And Mahaprabhu used to quote from the scriptures, it says, uh, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Hari Nama, Eva Kevalam, Kaloa Nasteva, 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 Gatir Anyatam. That in the Kali Yuga, there's no other way. And he says, 
Nasteva, Nasteva, three times for emphasis. No other way, no other way, no other way. Only by chanting Hare Krishna. So this is the main business of devotee, to chant the holy name. You should chant every day, try to chant on the Japa beats, do the chanting, and in this way you can be connected to Krishna. Our connection to Krishna begins with the tongue. We use the tongue to chant, and we also use the tongue to taste nice prasada, foodstuffs offered to Krishna. So in this way we can purify our consciousness. And by purifying our consciousness, our disease, our miserly weakness, our calm, our crowd, our lobe can all be purified into the service of Krishna and we can develop pain, Krishna pain. And that is the goal of life. So we want to try to achieve that. We are thinking goal of life is to be rich, goal of life is to be famous. No. The goal of life is to develop love for Krishna. That love is there in us, but we are giving it to the cats and to the dogs. We are loving our car, we are loving our whatever. We want to develop that love for Krishna. Okay? Hare Krishna. Is there any question? Anyone has any, how many people are chanting 16 rounds? Yes, 16 rounds, good, some people. Yes. Then how many people got beats? You all got beats to chant? Got any people, you got Japa Mala? Yes, you have to chant. Are you going to Yes, how many rounds? Try to increase. Try to increase. And don't reduce. You can't reduce. You have to maintain. Right? Don't be chant 16 rounds every day. Right? Okay. Vegetarian? Well, if you're not sure about the salt, then it's better to taste it before you offer it. Yeah. To make sure you've got it right. I've seen people do that, that they will taste it to make sure it's because, especially if you're cooking for many people, well, you're cooking for the Lord, so you want it to be right. So, of course, you, you should take care to watch how much salt you put in, you know. But if you don't want to do that every day. Sometimes you may have to do that, you're not sure. But not every day. That's the main point. Uh-huh. Uh, to 
that you know which direction the is in. Is that true? I've never heard before. No. I'm going to use this speak. Yeah, I heard somebody from Vrindavan uh, from said that. So, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I've never heard that before. I've heard something new. Yeah. Radhi, do you have a question? So, first of May, 31st, 31st of May, Nirjau Vikadasi. I think it's Wednesday, right? It's Wednesday coming. So, Nirjau, Pandava Nirjau Ikadasi. Ikadasi comes every few weeks, couple of weeks. Ikadasi means the 11th day of the moon. So every couple of weeks it's the eleventh day. Just like you have Chaturdasi and Jayodasi and Dwadasi, so Ekadasi. It's the eleventh day of the moon. And on the Ekadasi the devotees will observe some kind of fasting. Usually we won't take rice, we don't take grains even, no wheat and no beans on the ecology day. We, we, we just, usually we will take fruit or some vegetables, potato, like that, but we don't take rice and we don't take grains and beans on the ecology day. But this ecology which is coming is a special ecology. It's called Pandava Nirjau Ekadasi. You know, among the Pandavas there was Bhima. So Bhima was Vrikoda. You know the meaning Vrikoda? What does it mean? It likes to eat, right? It has a good appetite. It can eat a lot. So Bhima, he didn't like to do Ekadasi. Because on the Kadasi, you're supposed to reduce the eating. So they made some concession for Bhima. They said, you follow this one Ekadasi in the year. You do this one Ekadasi and you get the benefit of all the other Ekadasi. But you have to do the Ekadasi without eating or drinking. Means you don't even drink water. Near job. So it's been very hot here recently. So to do near job on you know on the it, it's not very easy thing. It comes right at the hottest time of the year. But that is the agreement. Bhima got that concession that if he would follow the ecodicy that one time, then he didn't have to do it the other times in the year. Anyway, Ikadasi is a very special festival. It's actually a day when we want to increase our remembrance of Lord Krishna. And we're meant to do more chanting and more hearing on that day. It's a day to increase our chanting. Regularly we chant 16 rounds. But on the Ikadasi day, Srila Prabhupada used to tell us you have to chant at least 25 rounds on a Kadasi. But we have to do more chanting and less eating. <laughs> right? Less eating, more chanting. So this Ikadasi is coming. Any of you may, if you like to do that kind of austerity, if you are in good health, if you're not in good health, it's okay, you don't have to worry. You can just chant more, do more chanting. And take ecology prasada. But if you're very healthy, and you're in, you're in good spirits, and you like to do it, then you can also fast, don't eat, and don't drink, just chant. Do the chanting. Of course, if you're working, then you can't do these kind of things. If you have to go out to work, 
yet driving and like that, you don't want to be doing these kind of things because it's, it's dangerous. So we encourage you all, be careful. You know? But if you are able, we like to, usually on our temple, we like to have a courtesy program and we invite the devotees to come to the temple on the courtesy day. Are you going to have a program here on the courtesy? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should start. Usually a courtesy is a good day, call everyone. Just like you know when you have a festival, when you have uh Janmaster meal, Ramno me, Gopuni, you have a festival, you have a program. So a courtesy every two weeks you can have a festival, invite the boys to come and have kirtan and more and have a, a little kata and a courtesy prasada. It's very nice. It, we need to encourage the devotees in their spiritual life. And this is important, you know, try to do things like organizing program on the Ekadasi day. I know we, we have a center in Bangkok, in Thailand, in Bangkok, and every Ekadasi we always have a program. And we get a couple of hundred people coming on the Ikadasi. And they're all working people, but they'll come in the night. They'll come for the kirtan. And then we have a little pretty simple prasada, the Ikadasi prasada. We need to encourage the devotees. And how to encourage them? You make programs like that. You have to get them together, have kirtan together, chanting, and distribute some prasadam, whatever you can arrange. So, Pandava maybe there would be prasadam that day. <laughs> but if there's no prasadam, nobody will come. <laughs> yes? You know, we're not looking to avoid these things. We don't mind a little bit uh, austerity when, once in the year. Rest of the ecology you can take ecology prasana. The taking ecology prasana. There was a, the one time there was a program, what happened was, this was in the time of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. They were having ekadasi. So there was to be a program. And one man came to the temple and he wanted to invite all the devotees to come for the program. But they said, no, 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 we're all fasting. It's ekadasi. So they told Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, they said, invitation came for the program, but we didn't want to go because we're all fasting for ekadasi. So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati said in Kuk Prasada, everybody take Prasada and go for the program. But to go for the program is more important than fasting. So chanting and preaching, it's more important than fasting. And the real purpose of the Ekadasi is to chant and to hear about Krishna. The fasting is material, it's not so important. If you like to do it, all okay. you don't mind. But if you like prasada, okay, make the prasada. Okay. <laughs> Right. 
Thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. Thank you very much for your wonderful lecture. We are truly, <laughs> we are truly grateful and blessed to have your association and blessings. Kindly forgive us for any shortcomings. Hare Krishna. So one announcement, so a gentle reminder again. Next week, Wednesday, 31st of May, is Nindala Ikadrasi. So next program, so everyone can come and have